It's uh, now our time to welcome the next company, uh, Lee Fit Power, a Canadian hard rock lithium exploration company with an aggressive drilling plan, as I understand it. So, um, without further ado, Francis, Thank you the show much. is yours. Hi, I'm Francis McDonald and CEO of Lift Power. And like uh, he just said, we are focused on hard rock lithium exploration in Canada. I will be making a few forward-looking statements. You can read this on the website. I'll just start out with some high-level points of why someone would invest in Lyft. And one of the key points is the resource base. So we will be putting out our initial resource estimate next week. And this will be one of the largest uh, top, it will be top 10 hard rock lithium deposits in the Americas, the Western Hemisphere. Infrastructure, so infrastructure is very important for these projects. These, uh, you're basically moving bulk materials. So we have existing paved highways and rail around our Yellowknife asset. And the other thing that sets us apart from other Canadian lithium explorers or developers is that we have access to the Pacific coast. And that's important because a lot of the processing of lithium is done in Asia and we can get a product to Asian markets. We have additional assets in our portfolio other than our flagship asset. We have a large land position in Quebec. Um, we've, we've defined a 25 kilometer long spodumene anomaly and this has district scale potential, so potential for new discoveries. And our Cali project is an outcropping lithium pegmatite district that's been known about the 60s, since the 60s. And, and these get no value uh, in, in lift right now. And I think one of the most important things is timing. So we are at the bottom of the lithium price cycle, and we all know that commodities are very cyclic, so the time to get in is now. And I'll run through some of the macro uh, to start with. So I'll start with the price chart on the left-hand side. This is what lithium carbonate price has looked like in the last 10 years. We've seen a number of cycles, but the most dramatic one has been the one we've just been through, where lithium price went from 10,000 a ton up to 80,000 a ton. So an 800% price increase, and then it's come down again 80%. So we are at that bottom, and we're seeing uh, a turn in pricing. We're seeing supply go offline, and so now is a good time to get in. On the right side, this is a infographic looking at all price performance for all commodities over the last 10 years. And what you notice here is that lithium is near the top for five out of the last 10 years, and it's at the bottom for four out of the last 10 years. And so what that tells you is that there is extreme volatility in the commodity price, and the only real constant is volatility. So the way that you play this is you recognize that and you get in at the right time. So just to talk about the, the long-term trend, lithium is driven by EV sales, and that's about 80% of the lithium production that goes to that. There's been negative sentiment around EVs this year, but globally there's 20% uh, more sales this year than last year. A lot of the negative sentiment is, is coming from North America, and uh, but the thing is, is North America is only 10% of the world's sales in EVs, and if you really want to understand what's going on in EV sales, you need to look at China. China is 60% of EV sales, and year-to-date sales are up 32%. So this is the reason why I think that the long-term megatrend of uh, electrification, the, the green energy transition, uh, transitioning to EVs is intact, and we will see another major cycle in the lithium market. So if you use 15 to 20 percent compound annual growth rate, um, this is a slide coming out of Albemarle's presentation, the largest lithium producer. With that growth rate, uh, we will need 3.3 million tons of lithium carbonate by 2030. And this year, we're producing 1.3 million tons. So to satisfy that demand, we have to increase production by two and a half times. And so that is a large increase. I mean, when you're talking about doubling or tripling production of a commodity, that means that you need a lot more mines coming online. And so what we've seen in the last couple months is the opposite. We're seeing supply going offline. And in the last two months, about 7% of the world's uh, supply has gone offline. 
a big part of that was a mine in China, and this is a Chinese battery producer that is also operating the mine. And that's, that was about 6% that went off uh, about a month ago. So UBS has called a bottom in lithium pricing, and they've been quite good at forecasting. They think that there's a 11 to 23% uh, increase in lithium pricing going into the end of the year. And again, I think the key here is that commodities are very cyclic, and lithium especially, so timing is very important. I'll transition to talk about our projects here. So Lyft is focused in Canada. Our flagship asset is in the Northwest Territories, just outside the city of Yellowknife. We have a portfolio of 13 lithium deposits that are along a paved highway just outside the city. We've completed 50,000 meters of drilling this year, and that's all going into the resource estimate that's coming out next week. And then we have two other projects in the portfolio, uh, the Cali project in the Northwest Territories and Quebec in uh, a big greenfields project in Quebec. In terms of people, so I'm Francis McDonald. My background is exploration geology. I worked for Newmont Mining for about 10 years. And then I started a company called Kenorland Minerals, which was focused on early stage exploration. We spun out lift out of Kenorland Minerals and I became the CEO. And we just saw Alex Langer up here. For Sierra Madre, Alex is president of Lyft. And so just to talk through where we are, we are outside the city of Yellowknife. Yellowknife is the capital city of the Northwest Territories. It's a mining town. There's been 15 million ounces of gold mined out of Yellowknife, and then that was really driving the economy up until about 1990. In 1992, diamonds were discovered for the first time in the Northwest Territories, and we saw a number of diamond mines come into production about 10 years later. The biggest ones were Diavik, which was Rio Tinto, and, and Acadi, which was BHP. And so diamonds have been really driving the economy in the Northwest Territories. Mining is 30% of the GDP. And all of the producing diamond mines are slated for shutdown by the end of the decade. So we have a lot of support from communities, governments, and uh, because people need jobs and the Northwest Territories needs more mines. So everything, all the green dots that you see on the screen, these are the lithium pegmatites or deposits that are in our portfolio. And going out to the east of Yellowknife, you can see there's a road on the map. This is a paved highway, and seven of our deposits are along that paved highway. And then going to the west of Yellowknife is another provincially maintained highway. This takes you down to Hay River, and Hay River is where the railroad starts. And so that's how we get this out of the Northwest Territories. From Hay River, we can get down to Edmonton, and from Edmonton, we can get out to the Pacific Coast. So there's two scenarios we're going to look at in a PEA. One is selling spodumene concentrate to Asian markets out of the Pacific Coast, and then the other one is building a lithium refinery in Edmonton. And those two scenarios have different uh, uh, capex and, uh, and, and, and margins, and so it gives a couple options for people to look at. So this is what these lithium deposits look like, and the catch line is that they're visible from space. And the reason for that is that the left-hand image, this is satellite imagery, the big white veins that you see crossing the landscape, those are the lithium deposits. And on the right-hand side, you can see in green a diamond drill rig, and it's just pointed at that big white wall of rock. So it's very easy to understand this. It's the simplest exploration program I've ever done because you just park the drill rig behind the outcrop and, and just start drilling it off. So that's what we've done in the last year. We drilled 50,000 meters, so 286 drill holes on eight of the different lithium deposits that we have. You can see the, the drill spacing, so the dots are, are drill holes and, and the lines are the traces of the drill holes. So we're pretty systematic. The whole goal of this is just to define resources as quickly as possible. Uh, we put out some metallurgical results this week, and we had excellent recoveries, so upwards of 87% on, on some of the bigger deposits and a global average of about 80% recoveries, which is uh, better than our peers. 
And we also had DMS recoveries or dense media separation of 60%. And that is similar to Sigma Lithium who's operating in Brazil. So I like to make a comparison to Sigma. So Sigma is operating. They've got about a $1.7 billion valuation right now. They're much more advanced than us in terms of project development, but geologically very similar. Everything that you see in green on the screen here, these are the outlines of the Sigma lithium deposits. And they have a pegmatite district. It's all going into a global resource estimate of about 100 million tons or 109 million tons. And at Yellowknife, everything in yellow, this is all at the same scale. So you can see that there's more yellow than green on the screen and that we have this potential to get up to 100 million tons eventually. In terms of valuation, so like I said, Sigma is trading at about 1.7 billion valuation right now. They're producing, so that's, that's the long term of where we would uh, be aiming to get to. Lyft is trading, I think, today at about 120 million. And another good comparison is Latin Resources. So this is a company in Brazil. They have a 78 million ton resource, and they were just acquired for 550 million Canadian. I'll talk about our other projects a little bit. So our Cali project is also in the Northwest Territories. It is on the border with the Yukon. And on the right-hand side map, all of the blue dots you see, these are other mineral deposits that are in the area. And Cali is just right in the middle of all of it. There is a road within six kilometers of the deposit. And from there, you can get down to Edmonton, which would be where we would look to put a refinery, or again, out to the Pacific coast at Skagway and, and to Asian markets. What we see at Cali is it's an outcropping lithium pegmatite district been discovered in the 60s. There was work done in the 90s. And the red polygons you see, these are the outlines of the lithium deposits. They're all about a kilometer long, and it goes about a kilometer across uh, in a perpendicular direction. So big area out here, and we see lots of high-grade lithium on surface. We've run some soil sampling over top of this, and the soil sampling defines the known lithium deposits that we see sticking out of the ground. And out to the east, it also defines uh, some other anomalism, which could mean there's more potential out there. I think putting a, uh, a size comparison is always good to look at. And the Kalina deposit, this is Latin Resources. And again, this is a company that was acquired for 550 million. This is very similar to our Cali um, project where there's a pegmatite dike swarm, lots of different dikes that are, that are uh, coming together to make a 70 million ton resource. And Kalina is about two kilometers uh, in the long direction, and about half a kilometer wide, so about one square kilometer. Cali at the same scale, it's about one kilometer by one and a half kilometers. So similar in terms of the aerial extent, and this is what we see as the upside of Cali. So if this was drilled off, this could potentially be justifying Lyft's current market cap, and we get very little value for this. Going to Quebec, so we have a large land position in Quebec. It's 2,300 square kilometers. We are encircling the Wabuchi deposit, which is going into production in 2026. And very similar geology to the Galaxy deposit, which is also Arcadium lithium. And this is the second largest lithium uh, deposit in Canada. What we've been doing here is we've collected 16,000 soil samples over the last two summers over that huge area, 2,000 square kilometers. And what those soil samples do is they, they tell us there's a, some lithium in the soil and, and those are areas that we want to focus in. Then we went in and took some other big samples. We're looking for spodumene grains in the soil. And the reason for that is if there's spodumene grains in the soil, there must be more spodumene in the bedrock. We have defined a 13 kilometer by six kilometer area that has similar amounts of spodumene grains as the Wabuchi deposit. So this is a large deposit going into production. We know what the signature of this is, is in the soil and we see 13 kilometers of the same signature on our property. So this has the potential to be a new district and we are out there defining drill targets right now. 
just to put that in perspective, so in the top left-hand corner, this is Patriot Battery Metals Corvette trend, and this is currently the largest lithium resource in Canada, 150 million tons. The company sold 5% of the stock to Albemarle for $100 million last year, and that was valuing the company at $2 billion. And on the bottom left-hand side, our Pontax trend looks like it has same, the same scale as Corvette. And so this is the upside, is that this could be a new district out there, and we are just on the verge of a new discovery. In terms of timelines and catalysts, so our metallurgical results were just out this week. The resource estimate is coming out next week. Uh, we're doing work in Quebec right now, and so that's, uh, that's what's happening right now. We're going to a preliminary economic assessment in Yellowknife, and that'll be out early next year. In terms of share structures, so right now we have 42.7 million shares out, 1 million options, no warrants, so fully diluted 43.8 million shares. Market cap of about 123 million, and we have about 3 million in cash. We have uh, analyst coverage from Canaccord, SCP Resource Finance, and Cormark. And uh, top institutional shareholders are Commodity Capital, Extract Capital, and Tribeca. So as highlights, we think this is one of the most exciting uh, portfolios for hard rock lithium in North America. We've got the resource estimate coming out next week. Big potential at our Quebec projects and Cali, and uh, it's going to be an exciting year. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Um, uh, very interesting, and I will just uh, back with. Uh, well, I'm, <laughs> I make one reflection. You said this is the simplest exploration program you ever seen. I think that separates you from the rest of us here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, just uh, if we look at the lithium price, uh, and it was slightly like a bell curve. Um, uh, it, that is not, if I understand it, uh, on back of less demand, but rather on speculation of a less demand, perhaps. I, is that the right way to see it? Yeah, and there was also supply that was brought on online mm -hmm. as well that uh, was, was more supply than was expected. And so we're working through that additional supply. But the thing is, is if you have 20% growth rate in demand, mm -hmm. you're going to work through it mm -hmm. pretty quickly. Yes, be because um, I, I think the key word here is uh, more demand came on stream than expected, not more demand that is needed. Is that the way to look at it? Yeah. yeah. And uh, you, you mentioned your catalysts here. Uh, that, that means that basically if we watch uh, uh, your company here, we would pretty much know where you are at the beginning of next year. Uh, is, 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 is that correct? Yeah, well, that's when we would be putting out the preliminary economic yeah. assessment. And so, yeah, that's the first look at the economics. Uh, and do you think that that would be a catalyst for, a, let's say, a revaluation? Because you had a couple of slides where you were pointing out mm -hmm. other companies that may be similar or slightly ahead of you, but um, versus yourself uh, trading with a premium. Is that a way to interpret it? Sure. I mean, that's that's a big uh, study that that de-risk mm. project, mm. and so you get a look at the economics, and that's typically a, a re-rate uh, time. But also for big partners, uh, OEMs, a lot of these companies don't really look at projects until they have some kind of economic study out. Yeah. And, and um, maybe I missed that, but because we, uh, I used that in my intro to you, you are on the way to an aggressive uh, drilling plan, but uh, I got the feeling that you are quite happy with the financing on that, or would you need to go to the market to finance your aggressive drilling plan? Uh, at some point, like all other exploration mm -hmm. companies, we'll have to go to the market, yeah. for sure. But if we look at the, the short term uh, for your PEA, uh, yeah, no, you're PEA, happy as you are. Yeah, PEA is is funded, and uh, most all of the work that's gone into that has already been done. So it's really just the engineering and putting the plan together. So we will just we will just wait and see, and you will work with the simplest uh, exploration program you ever saw. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.